Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome back to the channel today for another special interview. Again, as you see, I am not by myself. It is Tribeca Film Festival season, which means abundance of reviews and special interviews are occurring. And today I am with special guest Daniel Beckman, who is the star of the new short film, Liza Anonymous. Daniel, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing so good. I'm so excited to be here. We were just talking about, I landed in New York. The humidity is very different. So I, I know I'm in New York. I feel Tribeca is close. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the humidity and it's the energy for it. Things are starting to try to get back to normal. Tribeca is a huge deal. You're there on site. So, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an abundance of things all coming together for you. <laughs> it really is. And it just happens to be in June. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, so thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, sorry. not a problem. I, I, I'll be very honest. I'm not usually a fan of short films. And the reason yeah. is because it, it this film it did exactly why I'm not a fan of it. You end up liking it and you're like, oh, my God. Now, what is next? I want more. Where, where do I go for more? And I understand it's a process. And I really I wanted to hear from you because you're not. Uh, you're no stranger to this from another project of yours who went to a short tour series. Um, so you kind of seen that transition. But, you know, as a, a reviewer or just as a fan, if you see something you like, just like anything, you want that next episode. You want the sequel and shorts do it. It's the appetizer before the entree. And you're just like, where is my food here? So uh, definitely I enjoyed this film. Uh, you are so charismatic. We're going to talk about your character in a second. But yeah. yes, let's let help us as fans. W talk us through the transition here. What what number one, what can we do to help support efforts? And ultimately, what's the what's the map going forward with this? Such a great question. And thank you for your kind words. Um, I Yes, we made this as a concept short. So the idea is to get as many people as possible to see it. And, you know, in a way, it is a calling card for me because it's I play a bunch of characters in the film um, and so it's a really nice um, tidbit of like a snack, like you said, I love the way you described it, for potentially something more. So my dream would for it to become a series um, okay. and keep playing Liza um, because there's there, the characters we touch on in the film are so juicy. It's like, oh, I wanna know more about him or him or her. Um, so, so yeah, and and right now we're just living our festival dream life. So Tribeca is our premiere, and it's just the beginning, and we'll see where that takes us. So well, well said. Just the beginning is right. I'm putting that <laughs> out there. Yeah, again, you've uh, you you've been through this process with us. Uh, so then tell me. Uh, so yeah. do you do you find any similarities with it, or you're not thinking that far yet? You're just going. You're just going to live this moment and just you know wait till it. What, no, what's that's, next come later? Yes. So honestly, it's because so shorts are different from features in that way. Um, you know, with a short, it's of course it could be proof of concept or it can just be its own thing and enjoy yeah. that and let it be. Whereas a feature, if this was a feature at the festival, I might be actually a little bit more anxious, like, oh, like I want to sell it. Who who can I talk to? You know, so um instead we're literally just letting this take us where it okay. Is. But um, we're definitely a very enthusiastic team of mostly all female filmmakers, which is yes. so cool. And um, and our writer is she's like, oh, I would love to keep this going, you know. So we're all just very open. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And 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 wh why did you lean towards series over just a feature length film? I think that a series um, allows. For, I mean, anyone who's seen the trailer sort of knows the premise. Um, but, you know, Liza is so, it's such a universal theme she's coping with. She's searching for appreciation, love, belonging, all these things. It's a universal thing. She just goes about it in a kind of cringy way, <laughs> um, a very extreme way. Like, so I think a series could be really fun to dig into her past and go, what yeah. brought her here? And not only that, but it can feature the other like juicy actors and plot lines 
of all these different support groups that she attends. And I feel like it could have a longer life than, than a two hour movie. I'm right with you on there. Yeah, I mean, easily give me one episode of Milton Bay played by Daniel Fox alone. Just give me that for one episode and I'll be I'll be satisfied. But yeah, you're right. It, it, it allows longer storytelling. And I think there's a lot that can be done here, which is, again, the reason I like this, because that little bit of tease and now you're wondering, like, wait, how did she get to this point? And also with her. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, what's his name? That was that's also in the support group. Uh, Diego, who <sighs> is so supportive and how was he able to just be so forgiving i think that's also a story of his own so and then obviously because i i just have no clue about this but the improv community like what's this all about what's what is the future hold for something that seems to find peace and and also do we get to see liza actually break this addiction that she had because she right. gets what she want or is it still fun and games for her you know that that's that's a kind of a level of adrenaline she was having by doing all these things and you know being in a con should we say but like you know some people yeah. they get so used to it they, they that's all they know maybe they want to be in that role but you know it, it's a lot that could be done it's a yeah, lot that could absolutely be done. and no i love what you said too about the adrenaline rush because that was something um for for all the different characters that that um, Liza sort of goes through. She has this layer of still being her, but yeah. then she puts on a persona. So for, so it, and me as the actor, I was like, okay, I'm still this girl who is like, you know, insecure, but she can turn something on and look around the room for attention and sort of feel that on her. And that's a part of this quote unquote addiction she has this yeah. high and it's similar to you know I used to do stand up comedy. It's like similar to that. You go on stage, people laugh at your joke you wrote. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. So of the personas, the sex addict, the overeaters anonymous member, <laughs> the gambling anonymous yeah. member, and the alcoholic anonymous member. Which one of these personas was the most funnest to play so i i loved them all and i don't i don't want to fully give away the very end because yeah. we get to see a fifth persona right of of liza and that's technically my favorite so you're gonna have to watch um but out of all of those there was something just so fun about being this like prim and proper like british woman in this pink puffy jacket and, <laughs> and the, the line where she says he he was in my bed and he was topless and bottomless, and bottomless. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Whoa, then he was naked okay <laughs> he's just so sort of out of touch and then you have to remember wait this is liza trying to attention in this facade you know yeah. so <laughs> like she didn't get the rise she wanted, so she's gonna say, "Oh, and he was bottomless." Anyone? Yeah. Okay. Controversial. <laughs> um, so should I should I say the logline of the film? I guess I didn't even. Um, well, I, okay. So, so two two things with that. Before yeah. you do, I, I do want you to say it, but I also want you to describe Liza out, with. with your interpretation, whether it encompasses the long line or not, but like when you see this character, what do you see? Because words, I think words definitely got me in the door. But once you see this character, you're like, oh, this this is a little bit more complex than I thought, and and it's interesting. So I wonder how do you envision your character, and and how would you say and describe? Great, I love that. So I I look at Liza in the film. She says she's from Orange County. Do you yeah. remember that line? Yes. And um, and so I look at her as this this girl with big dreams but no direction. I feel like she was an undecided major in college and just sort of like, hey, I still don't know what I want, like a late bloomer. And I actually, I have a couple of dear friends that are are fully late bloomers that are just coming into their stride, like in their late forties even, um, and which is not old, by the way. Not um, at all. But, um, and so she, um, 
I see her as a very like a strange person from her family and she ends up moving here to sort of be like, I'm going to show them, I'm going to show them I can make something of myself. And, um, also in the backstory, cause you go, how did she get here? Um, yeah. She, in my mind, she uh, was an Al-Anon member. So her, her, she had a person close to her who was an alcoholic. So she would go to Al-Anon and, and in Al-Anon, she would start to meet these people in other support groups. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Al-Anon or if no. listen, mm -mm. it's essentially a support group for those who are affected by their loved ones who are alcoholics. Okay. Okay. Um, and so it's that idea though, when you get to speak your piece, you also get to listen and that to her was like magic. Like I said something, I, was, I wasn't I was shamed, I was listened to, interesting. Um, and so for me, she is just, so she has no oversight, she has no community, and she has no one to say, excuse me, what are you doing? Um, because she has, I, she's isolated herself and has fallen away. Um, and it was really interesting to play someone who is like an introvert to her core, yep. but then in these places trying to express herself in these ways. Cause I'm such an extrovert. Okay. So Danielle is, um, but yeah, and it, it's desperation. It's desperation for community. Yeah. Okay. I was right. I, I, I was, I was on that path. I mean, I, I, I definitely, you know, one of my questions was just like, you know, where did she get to the point where she just, uh, because when she, start to explain her her situation here she mm. she she talked about the lack of friends and obviously um the lack of communion the lack of um camaraderie and seems also to the lack of affirmation which is a lot of different things to really process here you know and it's 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 a matter of is she dealing with some mental issues or is she has she just fallen onto bad luck and it's and i think that that's why it's so intriguing to want to know, like, how did you get to this point, you know, and where do you go next? And how do you satisfy things? Because I think yeah. it's almost easy to say, like, well, if she does get in front of a therapist, that also could just be another line of of of, of addiction where she's like, I just want to be her by well, she any could, means. She up stories to the therapist. Like, exactly. We got it. Yeah, she, she needs to find her own voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and yeah. And a big, a big theme too, that the um, Tribeca judges spoke to us on the phone about when they actually chose our film, they said that the, I, how COVID has been over the last year or so has really been isolating. And so that idea of isolation and really being like, I, I don't, I don't know, like this sort of shrinking feeling and then like now we're reemerging into society, but how do we do it in a way that's not awkward? Um, they just thought that a lot of people would resonate with it, so. Yeah, I mean, I'd be one to say like, I definitely miss the human interaction. And <laughs> one, of, one of the ways I communicate with people that I'm close with is I hug. And that was the awkwardness oh. of, wait, are we hugging again or are we not <laughs> hugging? <laughs> You know, oh so my God. I, and I and I read that I was just like, yeah, definitely. I, I think a lot of people are going to look back and say, like, I definitely done and tried different things that you know I wasn't accustomed to doing uh, during the, the pandemic, during isolation and whatnot. I mean, yeah. Zoom became a norm, but if you go back maybe 10, 15 years ago, video calling was definitely considered like a that's pretty weird, you know. Yeah, and then <laughs> Skype came around and it was like, ooh, yeah, maybe. exactly. And then, yeah. <laughs> so now it's everything. Yeah, it's now it's everything, <laughs> and here we are today interviewing remotely. <laughs> and your setup is amazing, though. Like this, the the graphics and everything. Thank it's you. So great. Yeah. Thank it's, you. Thank we you. We gotta do what we gotta do. Right? So, so you know, I have to know you and Daniel Fox. I mean, on screen together, the the the, the scenes are magical. But I know there had to be some funny, funnier scenes that wasn't called on scammer. <laughs> so can you talk about work and the laws out of them? Absolutely. Um, yes, we had so much fun. And he's definitely one of the characters I would want to explore more. A big thing, I have to say, we really stuck to the script. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't really improvise much except for a, a couple of curse words I said in the bathroom scene. Um, that was improvised. But 
we um, we really stuck to the script. So it's not like there are any deleted scenes or moments, but one little thing we had in the bathroom scene is he says, um, like, you're acting like some M. Night Shyamalan shit right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah. Okay. Um, F this. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> not that I can curse. No. no. Um, I, I, and he, and we made this thing of where, he was going, that's some M. Night Shyamalan shit, which is how he says it. And in one of the cuts, I look at him and I go, it's Shyamalan. <laughs> and we didn't keep it in because it ruined the flow. But I was like, you're such an idiot. It's Shyamalan, you know? And um, and that was really, that was really fun. And on top of that, in that scene, he had to wear, he was wearing women's heeled boots. So yes. his feet hurt so badly. <laughs> <laughs> his feet hurt so much and that's probably one of his main memories from <laughs> he was a size too small and whatever um but yeah we had we just had a blast and we've become really great friends throughout the process and um yeah yeah we we would love to work together again so we just we really lucked out with casting him we had great chemistry and had a bunch of fun so yeah, that's awesome i'm pretty i was very certain you was going to bring up that that's definitely scottish line <laughs> I know. I can't wait for people to watch it because it's well known. But he's like, uh, that's deaf Scottish. Yeah, like, it's deaf it's Scottish. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're watching her basically in the in the film, it's the moment that she gets caught. Um, and that's not giving anything away. You know, her charade completely crumbles. And so mm -hmm. and then she's forced to get to this root of the problem and figure out her identity and it takes her on a theatrical journey, let's just say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the long line, actually. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a lonely natural. millennial addicted to support groups. She, she creates a different persona. Boom. There you go. There you go. There we go. So um, did you have to get a dialect coach for any of these accents? No, I actually did not, but I have, especially with my character from the Bronx, I have a lot of amazing friends. A couple of them were background actors yeah. that I consulted with. Cause I was like, listen, I don't have many roles as this er, lines as that character. Cause then I slipped back into being Liza, sure, sure, sure. but I wanted to be truthful cause we were shooting in Queens, um, but I had to be from the Bronx. And so I really want to make sure of that. So that was helpful. But I did have a wonderful acting coach. Her name's Erica Hart. And we actually worked on each character with this technique called lucid body. And yeah. it's actually where you work through your chakras. So it's a way of, for example, the heart chakra being like open or closed. And so I would say my character in Overeaters Anonymous is like her heart chakra is a little bit like I'm kind of shamed because I ate this chocolate cake and I hope it's okay. And then you have, you know, the second chakra, which is a little more sensual. It's kind of an open and a closed door where you work from that energy saying like maybe for the, the um, sexaholic anonymous character where she's being like, Oh, he was in my bed. Oh, but I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of it. You know? So like a little bit like, Ooh, isn't this cool? But it's not. I'm so bad. Like I'm I'm going in, you know? So yeah. sitting in those different places. And then, like, for example, the Alcoholics Anonymous character, she's she's seven. She's like up to the Lord, like, Lord help me, why'd I have that whiskey? Like, damn it again, you know, like <laughs> and um, and so it's that's kind of how we worked. And then the dialects just flowed from that, if that makes sense. No, that's awesome. Um, definitely, hopefully, you got some time uh, after the festival so we can go through this again. That that's really cool. <laughs> I'm like I'm like completely invested into learning that. That's yeah. really really cool. That's yeah. really cool. It, I I recommend it to anyone like dabbling in the acting field because it's something that you can really tap into quite quickly. If you um you know if you're like okay this is an this is an imploded heart chakra person. It's like boom, I need love, I need acceptance, I need blah, 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 blah. Or exploded, like, oh, the world is my oyster. I love everything. You're so wonderful. You know, like you can just boom, tap into a thing. Yeah. So great technique. That's awesome. You also didn't uh, hit the chulo one yet, so. 
Oh, oh, um, oh, uh, the the one from the Bronx with the yeah. tattoo. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. She is um the root chakra, which is like down into the floor. Like, listen, listen, like I'm coming at you. You know, like she's <laughs> just like I was there. I put the money on the poker table. We're done. Like, you know, and so like like boom, grounded. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit third chakra too, which is fire. You know? Oh, that's... someone just rang my doorbell. Did you hear that? <laughs> it sounds like it. It's Uber Eats. Your food is yeah. here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm staying at a, a friend's place in Brooklyn, so they're just gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> so I'm like, is Liza here? <laughs> Well, uh, I, I guess my final question is, um, yeah. you know, obviously I've really enjoyed this film and I'm definitely uh, going to keep my eyes open for whatever is to come next. And also obviously following your career, uh, but I will take the route, as you said, and just be patient, let you all enjoy this, you know, and let's just have fun. And if, you know, for whatever it's worth, this project alone was entertaining and I hope everybody goes out, check it out. Uh, and and really pour out their uh, their love and support online because it's definitely deserving. And again, for somebody who doesn't like shorts, this was definitely. Oh, one I, was I feel like, so honored. Like I love I love that caveat. I feel so honored that you um, that 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 you're a fan of this one. That means yeah. The world. So yeah, yeah. So my easy last question is: What is your plans to enjoy Tribeca uh, this weekend in New York? Obviously. Well, like, yeah, tonight I get to, I well, this morning I went to my favorite coffee shop, East One in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. And then I am going to the In the Heights premiere tonight. Honestly, that's kind of my, my coup de grace. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I love everything <laughs> when it all well does. Um, yeah. And then overall, just, uh, just like being back here, especially now that things are opening up a little bit more um, after the pandemic and everything has been great. And it's actually one year since my husband and I got married here in Carroll Gardens. Congratulations. So, thank you. Yeah, we got married. Um, we did a virtual elopement. So, but right here, right on this street is where we got married. So it's kind of cool to be back here for our year anniversary. That's awesome. Well, that that is the icing of the cake for all reasons why you should just have a fantastic weekend. Nothing but good vibes and much love and success this week. For you. So much. Absolutely. Well, folks, definitely jump in the comments. Let us know your thoughts about this film and mm -hmm. other projects that Miss Danielle has been working on for your support, your love and support in the comments below. Um, and if you are at Tribeca Film Festival, if you can see her, get one of those. <laughs> Give a hi. Say, hey, I know you. One of you, <laughs> one of the four of you in that film. <laughs> yeah, I I, which one. I'm vaccinated, so I'll give a hug. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. But be respectful, people. Still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. talk, talk. Yeah. But nonetheless, yo, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Danielle, for uh, taking time this week to talk to me. And uh, we'll have more reviews, interviews, and so on coming to you very soon. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Thank you.